neurofeedback, how it works and how it can help you. And this is just a very broad overview. And that is my handsome son, Seamus, my stunt uh, neurofeedback participant here. But in all honesty, this is him doing his home brain map, which is so easy to do. It takes 28 minutes and you can see on the screen that uh, almost immediately your results, immediately your results are available to you and they are available to me on my online platform. I'm going to show you some of that um, right now, but it's really easy. You can do the brain map yourself at home. It takes 28 minutes. We always schedule it when when we, we hope to schedule it when we are available. So if you need any support. Okay. So if you're brand new to the concept of neurofeedback, I wanted to start with what neurofeedback is actually doing. And I'm going to use the example on the left-hand side of our image here as a before brain map. So this is what a traditional QEEG looks like. And in this example, it is reading the parameters of extra slow and slow speed. Extra slow speed is delta, slow speed is theta. So on a traditional QEG brain map, I always call it the green zone. When we see green across the brain map, it means that those areas of your brain are using brain processing speed optimally. When we see areas using yellow to orange to red, that's one to two to three levels too high of that brain speed. So when we see this map here, having delta and in the front central areas here over to the right, back towards the back left, when we see in theta, the same area implicated, this means that those areas of the brain are running too slow. So if the brain is running too slow, that can result in ADHD types of symptoms, difficulty with attention, distraction, um, difficulty focusing. It can also be a result of burnout and so can have implications for being able to focus and working memory, being able to hold items in memory so that you can process information. Executive function skills are up there, being able to plan and organize, have big picture thinking, and then being able to chunk it down into smaller steps. So over on this side, let's think of this as the pre brain map. And it says before. This is an example in the middle of home neurofeedback, which uses the MuseCom headband. And if you're interested in getting your own MuseCom headband, uh, give me a shout out because we have an exclusive 15% off discount code that we can offer people who are working with us. And we're happy to do that uh, as a courtesy since you're joining me here in this webinar. So it takes the cost from um, $249 to $212. So it's pretty decent savings. But what we do is we use a highly specialized app, not just the MuseCom app. And there's a sensor that connects to the back of the MuseCom headband so that we can move this sensor to multiple areas across your brain so that we can get a reading from many areas in the front, in the central, in the posterior region so that we know how your brain is performing across the board and you can do it easily on your phone or your tablet. That is the amazing uh, thing about advances in science, neuroscience and technology. Now we can do this at home. And I've had this discussion with many people, uh, you know, what about the big, beautiful computers in your office? Those are fantastic. Those are research grade computers that really have all the bells and whistles, but you know how that goes that Landlines are great having a phone in your home, but having a cell phone that now is so tiny and I basically can do most of my work from, that's because the applications in here are multi-million dollar applications to be able to get them smaller. The same goes here. So it's pretty awesome to be able to now offer this in an app opposed to having to have people come in. So that's just totally awesome. So what happens is when we perform your baseline brain performance pattern, I always call it your BBPP. It's not a full-blown QEEG brain map, but I would contest that it gives us as neurofeedback practitioners uh, plenty of clinical information for most people to be able to provide neurofeedback at home, especially in the climate that we're in in a global pandemic. 
and I'm going to show you some of the results from one example of someone that I've worked with, and you can see for your own eyes how the brain performance pattern changes over time. So what we see, I call this the spider web. The BBPP looks like a spider web, and what you want to see is the entire spider web filled in with purple. And you can see here alpha performance is dragging. And this is just one example. I've changed a couple examples in here of the parameters that underlie it. But I did want to tell you that if you want to see all the parameters in a home brain map, please visit my YouTube channel at Dr. Trish Lee. And what you'll find is there is an entire playlist that describes every single brain performance parameter that you can find and see and get information from in a home brain map. So visit that playlist because there's tons of information there for you. But what this shows is this is a task. So the home brain map, we are able to glean an eyes open and eyes close and an under task brain map. And so what we're able to see is the brain and those three performance pattern. When your eyes are open, it is processing more information. When your eyes close, your brain processes less information and should recover, be, should be able to take a break. When you're doing a task, and when you, this is a pretty tricky task. Actually, I love it. I think it's perfect. When you're engaged in this task, what happens is your brain has to perform even harder because now it is under task. Okay, so what it, what the home brain map will give you is your alpha performance, beta, left, right, symmetry, and theta ratios. Now, let me explain them to you real quickly. This is the same um, information that we would be able to get in the office with a QEEG brain map. Basically, there's five main brain speeds that your brain uses to be able to shift in and out of the states that it needs to get into every day. So when you are asleep, your brain is running very, very slow. It is in delta. That's extra slow mode. When you wake up, it is in theta. It is groggy. That's because you're just waking up and your brain's not fully awake. Theta, however, should not be being exercised within the day because that means your brain is using fall asleep mode in the day when it should be nice and alert. So theta is the biomarker for ADHD. Then when your brain wakes up and it is alert, but it's not yet engaged in thinking, that is alpha. So alpha performance, we want it to be nice and alert. And there's a peak uh, hertz or frequency that alpha should be running at. And that, that measure is actually associated with IQ. The faster the brain is running, perfectly fast as I always call it, when the brain is alert is associated with sharpness in thinking. I'm gonna show you that in just a second. Beta performance, beta is a little bit faster than alpha. So there's a low beta for thinking and that's focus mode. And then there's high beta, which is fight or flight mode. And we're able to see all of these modes in the brain map. And then we're able to see it in your neurofeedback sessions. What symmetry is, is that the brain is supposed to have a perfect asymmetry. It's supposed to run a little bit faster on the left than on the right. And when we see this imbalance in there perfectly, that is a marker for mood. So if it's imbalanced perfectly, then a person is able to maintain a positive mood. If that balance is thrown off, it can result in anxiety and in depression and other mood disorders. So we're able to see a lot of information on this home brain map. Um, okay, so, uh, oh, just one more thing down here. Theta ratios, the reason this says ratios instead of performance is because another marker for a biomarker for ADHD is the theta to beta ratio. So theta is that slow speed fall asleep mode. Beta is that perfectly fast focus mode. So if theta is too high and especially if beta is too low, that ratio will get too big. And in the science, it's a three to one ratio of theta to beta is a marker of ADHD. And we're gonna look at that in just a minute. Okay, so let's look at alpha performance real quick. Uh, let me just check here, see what we got going on uh, in terms of, I don't see any questions. Let me just see, uh, looks like everything's all good here. Okay, so alpha response is the ability of the brain to recover. And it says it down there that typically alpha will increase by 50% more when you're 
eyes are closed so that your brain can recover. And it says it may be attenuated by stress. So if you struggle with stress or anxiety, when you close your eyes, your brain doesn't recover enough. And here it's to the tune of too little of 13%. So you can see between 50 and 250%, that's a brain that's really able to relax when the eyes close. This person's brain is not able to do that. So that's one of the markers that is associated with stress and anxiety. Uh, let, oh, we're jammed up here. Okay, alpha recovery. Um, what I wanted to show you is this is in the posterior region. And then we know that we move the sensor to be able to get the home brain map. And so what we see here is we also see this in the central area at negative 10%. So what this shows is that this is the eyes are open, the eyes are closed, the eyes are open. So it's looking at the ability of the brain to be able to recover, but then come back online for thinking. And so basically it, expl it explains that that difference is normally 25% or less. And we see that. So this is an appropriate measure because it's in the green. So on your brain map at home, we have these brain bulbs. And when the brain bulb is in the red, it means that is an area of the brain and a parameter that could use some work to improve your brain performance which then improves your life. And the main ways that improves your life is it decreases your stress and anxiety. It improves your ability to focus and attend and be productive. And it balances mood so you don't feel anxious or depressed. When we see a green brain bulb, it means that parameter is in check. Okay, so I wanted to be sure to be able to show you the theta to beta ratio. So what we see here is this ratio is in the red zone, the brain bulb is in the red zone, to, and, and it's 3.18 in the red zone. So this is a pretty significant uh, ADHD pattern where we see that theta to beta ratio is running too high of theta and not enough beta. So hopefully you understand this. So this is a marker for ADHD. We looked at a marker for stress and anxiety. This is peak alpha that I already explained to you. We see this brain bulb in the red zone. And if you remember me just saying that peak alpha is associated with that sharpness or focus of thinking. So I think of this as the marker for processing speed. So it shows that the peak largest alpha brainwave uh, while the eyes remain closed, normally it's at 9.5 hertz or more, uh, it can slow down with age. So this will also be a marker of uh, cognitive decline or memory decline as someone begins to age or, or their brain ages too early. But many times it is associated with slow processing speeds in kids and in adults because we want to see it closer to 9.5 or higher. Okay, so we looked at this at the very beginning. What I wanna revisit is, so we see that at the beginning, delta is high and theta is high. This is your pre-brain map. What neurofeedback does is it adjusts those levels by teaching your brain to make less of what it's making too much of, more of what it's not making enough of. So in this case, the brain's making too much delta. And after the training using the app, the brain is making less delta. And so it means the brain is performing a little bit faster and at the perfect processing speed. So this person can think better, feel less anxious, less brain fog, uh, ability to attend improves, ability to plan and organize improves because we see these high levels of slowing have decreased. Okay, so how does that work? So many people ask me like, I don't get it. And people tell me all the time, I don't get it. I just watch a video game and my brain gets stronger. Yes, and people ask me all the time also, what do I have to do or what does my child have to do during the sessions? Absolutely nothing besides watch the screen. And this is an example of a game, but you can also watch YouTube videos, which YouTube videos makes it incredibly easy to be able to engage in this passive therapy, passive meaning you don't have to do anything, your brain does all the work. Now this is how it works, is that you, when you sit in front of the screen and you're watching your favorite YouTube videos, you can watch mine if you want, when you're sitting there, what happens is then 
your brain relaxes and it becomes more neuroplastic. We need your brain to be more pliable so that we can guide it using neurofeedback into a better brain performance pattern. And the way that that works, and you can see it here a little bit, and it says that the brain waves are translated into good or bad performance levels. I like to use the words optimal or irregular, but basically this EEG data is fed back to your brain, back into the screen, and the screen will go brighter if your brain is making more of perfect processing speed. It will go dimmer if your brain is using too much slow speed, which causes attention difficulties and brain fog. If it's using too much fast speed, which causes anxiety and stress and overdrive. And then if it goes out of, the, in, of those zones, your screen goes dim. When it's making more perfect processing speed in the middle, your screen begins to play bright and the audio plays louder. So basically your brain is getting positive feedback for adjusting the level so that it is working in the optimal brain performance pattern. So our goal is to be able to get it to do that within the sessions more and more and more. Because if we can get your brain to use the optimal pattern more within the sessions, it will begin to stick over time. That is what is called a positive feedback loop. So when we get your brain to produce more perfect processing speed and less of the speeds out in the extreme, it will begin to hardwire itself in. So when it starts rewiring itself, it's called Hebb's law. Neurons that fire together, wire together. At the same time, when you stop using the pattern of stress and anxiety and overwhelm and fatigue and lack of attention and distraction, when you stop using these and you unwire them, that's called anti hebbian learning theory. And here's the way that it works basically. I use this analogy, so forgive me if you've heard it before, but it's like if you've created a pathway from your backyard to your best friend's backyard who lives behind you, if you always take the same path, that path is completely trampled down. So that is the path that your brain is using. So if you have ADHD, that's the neural pathways for ADHD. If you struggle with anxiety, you're using that path for anxiety day in and day out. Now, if you don't wanna have ADHD symptoms and if you don't wanna struggle with anxiety, what do you need to do? You need to stop using the path that you use to get from your house to your friend's house and you need to start cutting a new path in the fields. So we need to weed over the path you've been using and we need to create a new path by traversing it or trampling it with your feet back and forth, back and forth. The way we do that in the neurofeedback sessions, this is the beauty of home neurofeedback is that at home, you can do daily sessions where you teach your brain not to use your ADHD mode and not to use your anxiety mode, but to use the mode of calm focus. Calm focus is perfect processing speed up in the middle, fast, extra fast speed down, extra slow speed down, and your brain is calm and focused. And then you practice using that pattern in your daily neurofeedback sessions, and it starts hardwiring itself in, Hebb's law. It starts unwiring the one you've been using, anti heavy and learning. And in the end, after enough time and enough practice, that old pathway is going to grow over with weeds and the new one's going to be fully trampled in the one that you will be using forever. And that's how neural pathways are changed. That's what neuroplasticity is. That is how it works. And that's how neurofeedback does it by rewarding your brain with a bright screen. And it's not a punishment, but giving your brain negative feedback with a dim screen when it's using the ADHD or anxiety mode. It gets the reward when it's using the calm focus mode. And over time, your brain changes its brain performance pattern. And there is a boatload of science that proves that it in fact works exactly that way, that it's highly effective. There's little regression, there's no side effects, and it can really reprogram your brain to use a better brain performance pattern. Okay, so how does it work? It is easy peasy. Let me just check my time. We only have a few minutes left. It's easy peasy. So when you log in, basically your session will start. And here we see it's two rounds of 10 minutes and this is the protocol and you're doing it with your eyes open, you hit start. Then you choose if you'd like to do games, uh, then videos have been added in audio. This is an old screenshot, but you can choose YouTube videos or you can listen to audio, you choose your game. 
Then what happens is you engage in your session, you use the headband, you do your session, you just watch your videos, you don't have to do anything else besides that. And then after your session in my platform, and actually I think I put, uh, oh, I was going to put other screenshots in here, but I never did because of time. On your app location, you can see your own progress. And I'll show you on, on, my, uh, on my app in just a second, but you can monitor your own progress because I just got done doing a session as a matter of fact. Um, you can monitor your own progress. So your sessions will pop up, your own statistics and your training history. It shows all my protocols. And when I choose my most recent protocol, it gives me lots of graphs. Hopefully you can see that. I don't know if you can with the glare. It gives you uh, graphs of all different kinds. It tells you your, how often you've been in the zone, how often you've been in the deep zone. Those are markers that you use. So basically you can track your own progress and you'll know when you've had a better session or a less than optimal session. Now for me, it gives me even more data than that. It gives me more graphs I can see how your brain performed in real time within every session. So I can make sure it's changing within sessions. I can see those changes across sessions. I can see tons and tons of data. Now, the beauty of home neurofeedback is it's all measurable. There's so much data to be had by a, by a, a professional clinician who knows what he or she is doing. But this is one of my favorite charts because it shows sessions over time. And this is an example of the ADHD mode coming down, which is the turquoise line. The red line is anxiety coming down and uh, stabilizing and optimizing. And it's just a different brain performance pattern than up here at the beginning over just the course of a couple months. And that is exactly how we do it in my neuro coaching and my home neurofeedback program. So this is pretty cool stuff that we're able to do that. And so there's so much data there for me to be able to see. So what we're looking for is in the ideal world, let's just use this red line as an example of anxiety. I wanna see your anxiety come down, 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 down. And then I want to see you be able to keep it down here for three months. If you're able to stabilize and optimize this pattern, organize it, stabilize it, keep it down here for three months, it's likely it's not going to regress. Then of course we do neuro coaching. We engage in neuro coaching sessions over Zoom. And then what we do there is I am able to help you uh, after you've optimized your brain pattern. I want you to learn how to keep it there forever. So I can give you behavioral strategies, tips and techniques so that you can keep it there so that you use the new better brain pattern for the rest of your life and you stay out of the one that you were using before. And this is how you can create permanent lasting change. Uh, okay, so uh, let me just peek in here. Anybody have any thoughts or questions for me? I am not seeing any in the Q&A box right now, but if you have any thoughts or questions, you can always reach out to me at trish at drtrishlee.com. And please visit my website. We're in perfect time. I always go way over. So this is a luxury. Um, you can go to my website. You can contact me over on the right. And my neuro coaching programs are all listed there on the website as well. Okay. I hope this helps you out so that you can understand how you can quickly in 28 minutes Take your own brain map at home, super easy, that you can see the data right away. I will go through it with you for one hour when you enroll in our program. We go through it over Zoom and I tell you absolutely everything your brain is doing so that you understand. Then what happens is then you start your neurofeedback training program and I'm able to help you optimize that brain pattern, learn how to use it forever and you ride off into the sunset. Uh, okay, so thanks for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it. And uh, any questions, Trish at drtrishley.com. And remember, control your brain or it'll control you. Thanks everybody. <laughs>